apologize to me if I would like the mercy of Allah I need to accept the apology I need to accept the apology when we've demanded an apology perhaps we may receive it with insincerity remember this when you demand an apology you may get it very insincere when it comes without a demand it is more sincere remember this when we seek the forgiveness of Allah it is genuine it is sincere so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are genuine, sincere, you really regret. There is remorse. You admit, I will forgive you. And you know what will happen as a result? When you get to the hereafter, and we're talking about the gems of belief in the hereafter, I promise you that there will be no mention of that sin of yours at all. Even those who recorded it will be made to forgive it. If you did good deeds after having sought forgiveness, no matter what it was, that's Allah's plan. So this is the goodness Allah keeps us going. He knows we have been created as human beings and he is the one who made us. But at the same time, he says, when you lead your lives, try and worship me in a way that you know I'm watching. That's the lower level of Ihsan. Ihsan is two levels. The lower level is, you know that I'm watching. So what would happen? Would you falter? The reality is no, you wouldn't falter. And if you did, because shaitan keeps trying, shaitan keeps trying. If you did falter, you know Allah is watching and Allah is merciful. He will forgive me for as long as I seek the forgiveness. And through his will and through his assistance, I will not commit the sin again. And if you happen to falter thereafter, a year later, a month later, two years later, five years later, you fall back into the same sin. Don't lose hope. Go back into the same seeking of forgiveness. You are still alive, aren't you? You know, as they say, the match is not yet over. You can still score a goal, so go and score it. If you are to, for example, witness a match, you might notice one team scores earlier on. It doesn't mean they won the match. You have to wait and see the score at the end. The same applies to our lives. Shaitan might have scored 10 goals and then you score one. It doesn't mean you have lost or Shaitan has won. At the end, you might score 10, 20 goals at once. And what was the score? 11 to shaitan and 20 to you. What happened? You won. Because at the end, you were the one who scored. When the final whistle was blown, there we are. With us, when the final trumpet is blown, that is how we will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how you've led your life right now, there is a hadith that says there would be a person who may have led their lives in such a, an outwardly pious way. But at the end... They did such evil deeds and their lives ended in an evil way. They would lose. And what happens with a person who led their lives or people who lead their lives in such an evil way. And at the end, they seek forgiveness. They are remorseful. They ask Allah's forgiveness. Allah says mercy to them. The example of a person, there is a specific hadith, the example of a particular person. The hadith says 70 years of bad deeds. And at the end, they did a good deed and Allah granted them Jannah. So gems of the belief in the hereafter, you never know which one of the deeds that you've done with sincerity for the sake of Allah has been loved by Allah to the degree that he grants you paradise, ignoring all the other deeds. That's what it is. Take a look at the hadith of a man who quenched the thirst of a dog, a woman who quenched, for example, the thirst of a cat and so on. There are so many examples and these examples go to show that even though some of these people were really evil in terms of the amount of sin they committed, they had sincerity and they turned to Allah through a deed of compassion. They felt in their hearts, let me reach out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the deed and he says, I looked at this deed and I forgave a person. Now we have one problem. What is the problem? From amongst us, there are those whom shaitan comes to again and says, look, don't worry. Never mind your dress code. Never mind what you do. You can go to the clubs. You can party. You can alcohol. You can adultery, everything. Just keep a whole load of cats and start feeding them every day. <laughs> yes, that's a misunderstanding. That is absolutely wrong. It is your duty to be the best Muslim possible, the best human being possible. You have one chance. Wouldn't you like to win the match? Today we look at World Cup and we are excited because our team won. We know nobody from the team, but we are more excited than they are. We get so upset. We start crying real tears when they've lost. What about the real match? Let that not distract you from real life matters. The real life, there is, it's not a game actually, but it works somehow similarly 
in certain aspects of it, the fact that it has a beginning and an end, and the fact that whoever scores the most wins. This is something regarding the hereafter. You are alive, my sisters. You are alive. You are breathing. Do you know what? For as long as you're alive, you still have a lot of hope in the mercy of Allah. And don't think that if something has happened, not according to your liking, that Allah dislikes you, hates you. No, He has packaged you a test, as we said in the earlier lecture. He has packaged for you a certain package. He will test you with those tests. They have to come in your direction. You will not be able to chase them away. You have to take them in your stride and you have to do the best given the situation you're in. You have to, you have no option. You know, a day may come when you might be present in a place where something really disastrous happens, whether it is a tsunami, whether it is an earthquake, whether it is some form of disaster created by man or otherwise, and you need to know how to deal with it. You cannot become despondent. You have to have hope in the mercy of Allah so much so that my mothers and sisters, I can tell you as we grow older, we become weaker. You know that the peak of age is 40 years. The Quran speaks of Al Ashud in more than one place, which means the peak. And Allah says that is 40 years. When man gets to the peak of 40 years, which means after 40, at 40 you've arrived at the top of the summit, the top of the mount, and now you're sliding down slowly. Slowly. You cannot deny that. You know, we feel good when we are 60, 70, and someone says, You're looking young. Oh, thank you. Hear that? It's an honor to be told you're now looking old, subhanallah. Because why? It's a gem of the belief in the hereafter. You are reminded you're going to Allah. When you are told that you are becoming old and you are returning to Allah, do you become depressed? If that's the case, you still need to purify your belief. Don't be depressed. Death is not something evil. It has to happen to every one of us. If death was evil, Allah would not have written it for anyone. But it is written for absolutely all of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All. It's just going from stage one to stage two. You want to graduate from primary school to the university or from secondary school to the university, but you want to still remain in the same classroom. You got to walk out. That's when you're going to get your graduation, subhanallah. That's when you're going to be able to go now to the next stage. Walk out. No, I can't walk out. Very bad. That's, what, that's how we look at life as. I don't want to walk out of this life. Allah says, you don't take your own life away. No, suicide is prohibited. We all know that it's a major sin. A person who commits suicide will not be seeing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless they were unwell mentally and they didn't know what they were doing. That's between them and Allah. And for this reason, we never judge people who may have committed suicide due to depression because you don't know upon what condition they've died. But at the same time, we will continue speaking about how prohibited it is because life is sacred and it is the ownership of Allah, not mine and not yours. Remember this life is so sacred. It's not owned by you. It is owned by Allah. You're not allowed to take it away. You cannot not even your own life because your own life is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. And this is where Islam says that it is prohibited to harm yourself. You know, those who are trying to give up smoking, may Allah make it easy for you. It's sad that I have to say this in front of all the mothers and sisters, but sadly I've seen mothers and sisters puffing away like chimneys. My beloved mothers and sisters, it's a bad habit. Give it up. It harms you, doesn't it? If you take a look at some of the packagings of cigarettes that show you, you know, photographs of lungs and little, uh, you know, body parts, it is a disgrace to believe that I'm a mu'min. I believe in Allah. I want to get to the hereafter. And here I am actually trying to harm the same body that is actually not even mine. Allah gave you this body as a uniform just to be known in this world. Otherwise, it's going to go. That's it. You're going to be separated from the body. You will carry on and the body will probably be buried and it may be decomposed in no time. So we need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept something unique for us. You have hope. You've sought forgiveness. Allah has forgiven you. Believe in your heart. Allah's forgiven me. When you become older and as you become sickly, it has to happen. You cannot remain healthy forever. Things change. They have to change. So if you don't believe properly in the hereafter, you become depressed. You become a person who wants to cling to life at any cost, any cost. You become a person who wants to defy your age. Don't worry if people say, mashallah, this person is aging now. So what? Alhamdulillah. You know, you might not want to say it in a disastrous way. I'm not promoting that you say it to one another. Are you looking old sister? 
I'm not promoting that you say that to one another. Don't hurt one another. But I am trying to say, become conscious of the fact that you no longer as you were before when you were younger. You no longer. So what you do, prepare for the meeting with Allah. And how do you prepare for the meeting with Allah? Well, the Quran tells you very clearly, you're looking forward to meeting with Allah. Guess what? Allah is looking forward to meeting with you.